All right, so that's just what I'm going to write here. This is snow day part two. Parallel and perpendicular slopes. Now here's a hard word to spell. P-E-R-P-E-N-D-I-C-U-L-A-R. -E -E perpendicular slopes. Okay. So here are the two lines. This is number one. Well, actually it's not, it's number nine. X plus 12Y, uh, uh, X plus 12 equals Y. Well, this is the same as Y equals X plus 12. Now the goal is to find the slope of each of these lines. There's a positive one, invisible, in front of the X. So the slope of this line is positive one. Now with the other line, Y minus X equals negative eight. I'm going to have to erase my equal sign for a minute. There. <clears throat> because I have to put this in slope intercept form. So I have to add X to both sides. And so since negative X plus X is zero, I'll have Y equals x minus 8 with a slope of 1, an invisible 1 in front of the x. So, the slope here is 1. When two lines, two completely separate lines, have the same exact slope, that means they're parallel. They run side by side forever. And they never cross. That's what parallel is. So let's do the next problem. Number 10. This is also asking about par excuse me, parallel. Parallel. Okay. So this time our question is going to be number 10. And that's y plus 4 equals 7x. Well, I know right now because I have y and then a constant, but I'm going to be good and subtract 4 from both sides just to get this in true slope-intercept form. The slope is 7. The other line is 6x minus y equals negative 4. Okay, I'm going to move negative 4 back a little bit because I have to subtract 6x from both sides of the equation. So I can get this in slope intercept form. Minus 6x minus 6x. Don't forget to bring down your minus sign with the y.
Now that negative sign is really negative one. Negative one times y. I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by negative one, and that means I multiply each of the numbers by negative one. Okay, now here's what I'm left with. Y equals, well, let's do it this way, six over one. Right now they're both negative. And minus four over negative one. Now I've got negative six divided by negative one. The negatives cancel, and six divided by one is just six. Now, minus negative four, which is what this will be, four over negative one is negative four. So I'll have minus negative four, that makes it a plus four. But this is what I care most about. This is the slope of the second line. So M equals six. They have different slopes. So not parallel. And that's the story of parallel lines. If the line, if, if the slopes are equal, they're both one or they're both two or they're both three, then you've got a parallel line. If the slopes are different, even by a little bit, the lines are not parallel. Parallel lines are pretty easy to deal with, finding out if they're parallel. Perpendicular takes a little bit more energy. Perpendicular lines, perpendicular lines have opposite. No, I want the I want that to go on the same line here. I'm going to move it down. Have opposite. dash reciprocal slopes. Now here's what that means. Suppose you've got a line and you know somehow that its slope is positive two-thirds. You want to know the slope of a line that will be perpendicular to this line. That means it crosses the line at a right angle, so that all of these angles will be 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and 90 degrees, that's what perpendicular is. Well, the slope of this line will be, this one is positive, so this will be negative. This fraction is two thirds, so this fraction will have to be three over two. 
And these slopes are called opposite because they have opposite signs and reciprocal because the fraction parts are reciprocals. Opposite reciprocal slopes. So in number 11, Make sure it's asking for perpendicular. Yep, perpendicular. OK, state whether the two graphs are perpendicular. And here are the lines. Y equals 6X minus 9. And 2Y equals 5 minus X. which is x minus 5. So let's rewrite that. Here you can see the slope is 6. m is 6 for this first line because it's in slope-intercept form. This is just strange. This is 2y equals negative 1x plus 5. That looks like a y, kind of. Now it looks like an X. OK, divide by 2 because we have to get Y by itself. So Y equals negative 1 half X plus 5 halves. The slope of the second line is negative one half. These slopes are not opposite reciprocals. The slope of this is six, which is the same as six over one. That means this slope, slope, must be negative one sixth, the opposite reciprocal of that. For these lines, to be perp. You know, ah, oh, there. Let me get rid of that and write a better one. Yeah, just the number six here is exactly the same thing as six over one, but it's much easier to write the opposite reciprocal of six over one than if I left it as six. So that's why I wrote it as six over one. Now I can write negative one sixth. And that would be the opposite reciprocal of that. Clearly, negative one half is not the opposite reciprocal. It's the opposite, but it's not the reciprocal. So not perp. Brownie face. OK, let's check on 12. Our first line is X plus 2Y equals 7. I'm going to move my 7 over so I can subtract x from both sides, and the x should be in the first position. So I'll just move my 7 over so that I can say minus x, minus x, minus x. 
Since seven is positive, I'll turn that into a plus. And so we're going to have two Y equals negative one X plus seven. And then divide by two, divide by two, divide by two. In order to discover that my slope is negative one half. So here my slope is negative. Let's try to do this. That was a temper tantrum. Negative, there's the fraction bar. Put a one on top and a two on the bottom. Okay. Now we have 2x plus 4y equals 9. I'm doing that because I can see I have to subtract 2x from both sides. And since 9 is positive, I'll put a plus here. So we're going to have 4y equals negative 2 x plus 9. And we're going to divide by 4 and divide by 4. Oh no, and divide by 4. So that y equals negative 1 half plus 9 four, x plus 9 fourths. Oh my goodness. Now, is this really true? I subtracted x. Yes, this is negative one half. Over here, that's a negative two. That's a positive four. So once more, we do not have perpendicular lines. In fact, we have parallel lines because their slopes are exactly the same. Okay, so. If they had been perpendicular, if perp, then the slope of this line, slope would have been positive two. The reciprocal of one half is two over one. And the opposite of negative is positive. So the slope would have been positive two. That is not positive two. So these end up being not perpendicular. because they're exactly the same. If the question had been, um, do, are these two lines parallel? Then the answer would be yes. But here, they're not perpendicular. The question was, are these two lines perpendicular? So, that was a very annoying ending. Now, these are linear functions. They're not all functions. No, got to pull it over. OK. And then bigger, 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 bigger. We are going to find the equations of straight lines. OK, so number one in the equation of straight lines, 
or linear functions. Let's look at number one. They give you a certain amount of information. And then you have to find the equation of the line. OK. So they tell you the slope is four. And they tell you one point on the line. One point on the line is seven, four. And they want you to find the equation of this line. The, the formula they want you to use is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. However, you can also use, if you want to, y equals mx plus b. And so for each of these, we're going to do it both ways just so you can see it. And after that, we're going to have to, um, in the interest of time, I'll just use this one because this is what you're asked to use in the book. Unless I get impatient, in which case I'll use the other. <coughs> OK. So. Y minus Y1. This is Y1. This is X1 equals m times x minus x1. So we'll have y minus y1, 4, equals the slope 4, times x minus 7. My next step. I'm going to distribute a y minus 4 equals 4x minus 7. Uh, uh, uh. 4 times 7 is 28. Right there. 4 times x. 4 times negative 7. Then I will add 4 to both sides. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so I'm left with a y on the left. And on the right, I'll have negative 28 plus 4. That'll be negative 24. And that should be the equation of the line. When you're using the point slope form of the line, which is what this is called, point slope. Because you, when you have a point and you have the slope, this formula is just built for that. But many, many people learned in high school to use this. OK. Now, I can stick four, the Y coordinate in for that Y, and seven, the X coordinate, in for that X, and four, the slope, in for the M, so that I'll have 4 equals 4 times 7 plus b. You almost always have to figure out b. So this will be 4 equals 28 plus b. 
So subtract 28 from both sides of this equation. 28 minus 28 is zero, so you're left with a B on the right, and four minus 28 is negative 24. So now, you're gonna give the uh, answer, you almost always give the answer, in y equals mx plus b form. We know m, now we know b. So y equals 4x minus 24. So either way you get the same answer. So we have found the equation of the line that has slope 4 and contains the point 7, 4. Not real hard. This is what I consider the real thing in finding the equation of a line. You're given two points and that's it. And you're asked to find the equation of a line. All right, here we go. Number four. All you, well, first, every line contains an infinite number of points, okay? An infinite number of points packed really closely together. We only know two points. We're only given two points out of an infinity of points, but when it comes to straight lines, that's all you need. To do this, you need steps. The first step, find the slope. You always find the slope first. And that's going to be M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So I better decide what I'm going to let be X1, y1, x2, y2. Now I know. So, 8 minus 5 over 12 minus 4. Eight minus 5 is 3. 12 minus 4 is 8. So our slope is going to be 3 eighths. Now is when you can use, second step, use point slope form. Or, slope intercept form, and I'm going to write what these two are. Intercept form, F-O-R-M. Write it real little? Okay. The point slope form is Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X. One. Slope intercept form is the one we know and love best, y equals mx plus b. However, I'm going to use this one. So y minus 5 equals 3 eighths times x minus four, it's my x1, y1. Sometimes if this 
if this point is easier than that point, you can let this point be x1, y1, and that be x2, y2. The world will not come to an end, probably. However, there is a green comet in the sky. Duck and cover. I'm going to multiply by the denominator. So that the eights cancel. And on the right, I'm left with 3 times x minus 4. And on the left, I have 8 times y minus 5. And then I distribute 8 times y, 8 times minus 5, 3 times x, 3 times minus 4, and we'll have 8y minus 40 equals 3 x minus 12. So now I'm going to add 40 to both sides. Negative 40 plus 40 is zero. So I'll be left with 8y on the left, and on the right, 3x. Think to yourself, 40 minus 12, if you're doing this by hand. 10 minus 2 is 8, and 3 minus 1 is 2. But the thing is, the bigger number here is positive. The smaller number is negative. So yeah, it really is the same as 40 minus 12. 28 will be positive, so I'll say plus 28, and then, and then, I am going to say 28 plus 12, just because I don't totally trust myself. That's right. Okay. Now I divide by 8, and I divide by 8, and I divide by 8. 8 over 8 is, is 1, so I have 1y, which is y, equals 3 eighths x plus. One more time, we've got to reduce. And you can probably do this in your head, but I am going to do it with the calculator just to help people get used to using the calculator. 28 over 8. Twenty eight divided by eight. Math. Enter, enter. Seven over two. Seven over two. So that This is the line. Y equals 3 eighths X plus 7 over 2 is the line that contains these two points. Now, number 5. Uh -uh, I want to do number 6. Number 6 contains negative integers in the points. So number six, you have to be a little more careful. Our two points are negative five, negative seven, and our second two points are negative 10, negative 14. So we'll let this be x1, y1, and let this be x2, y2. Great. Okay. So step one. Slope. 
m equals y. I'm going to I want to write this big because it is more dangerous when the numbers are negative. Dangerous in the sense that it would be so easy to make a mistake. Y 2 minus Y 1 over X 2 minus X 1. So that would equal negative 14 minus negative 7. OK, this minus has got to be there. And what you're doing is you're saying. Y2 minus whatever Y1 is. So remember that. And with X2 minus X1, same kind of deal. Negative 10 minus. And then you put whatever X1 is, which is negative 5. So this will be negative 14 plus 7 over negative 10 plus 5. And that will give us negative 7 over negative 5. The negative signs cancel. And so our slope is seven fifths. So beware of negative numbers in there. Now step two. Y2 minus Y1 equals M times, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, no, Barbara. These are where you put the numbers. This Y will remain just Y. This X will remain just X. X1. So, go back up and see, all right. Y minus negative seven equals seven fifths times X minus negative five. So take an extra step to rewrite this. Y plus seven equals seven fifths times X plus five. Now, quite honestly, because the denominator is five, if you were to distribute the seven fifths, this would be one of those rare times that it's not hard because the fives would cancel. But most of the time you don't have that. So I am going to use the same method I've been using for fractions. The whole time. OK, do well, I stop it? So the fives cancel. Let me try to get rid of that. There. The fives cancel so that we're going to have five times Y plus seven equals seven times X plus five. Then we distribute five Y plus 35 equals 
7x ah, plus 35. So look what happens when I subtract 35 from both sides of the equation. 35 minus 35 is zero, but 35 minus 35 is zero. So what we're left with is 5y on the left and 7x on the right, so that when I divide by 5, my equation is 5 equals 7 fifths x. What happened to the y-intercept? Well, it's really still there. It's, it's just invisible. 35 minus 35 is 0. So you have a 0 y-intercept. But when we do have a 0 y-intercept, we don't write it because there's no need. So here is the answer to the equation of the line that contains these two points. Okay, shake your head a little bit. Jump around in your chair or on the bed, wherever you're watching. Because now we're going to do something totally new to almost all of you. We're going to be finding the equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. So let me read the whole thing to you. Number seven, eight, nine, and 10. Number seven, <clears throat> write an equation of the line containing the given point and parallel to the given line. Here's the given point, here's the line. We need to find another line that's parallel to this line, but that other line goes through this point. Okay, let's do it. Oh, and give our answer in y equals mx plus b form. So let's find the, the important things right now, the important words, whoops. Oh. Right, equations of parallel lines. Now, before you were given the slope and one point, remember those back here? Yeah, like in number three, you were given the slope, seven eighths, and one point on the line, seven negative four. This time, you're given one point on another line, and you're given the equation of one line. Here's your strategy. Find 
the slope. of the given line. This is the given line. Find that. That is find the slope M equals. Once you have the slope, you can find the equation of the line using this point. So you find the slope from the line, and then you find the equation of the line. That is the equation of the line you're looking for. by using the slope and the point, the given point. They're called given because that's what's given to you. You're given a point, you're given an equation of a line. And then you're told what to do with them. So, okay, I always need to have my slope first. So I'll find the slope of this line. Then since parallel lines have equal slopes, once I have the slope of this line, I know that will be the slope of the line parallel to that line. So that's what I'll do. Okay, find the slope. Slope of given line. x plus 3y equals 5. Race this, move it over a little. Because I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And since 5 is positive, I'll put a plus 5. So x minus x is 0, leaving us 3y equals negative 1 x plus 5. Then I divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3 to get y equals. y equals negative one third x plus five thirds. This is what we're looking for. Okay, the slope of the given line is negative one-third. We're going to use this slope to find a parallel line. All right, so y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, y1 is nine, x1 is eight y minus 9 
equals negative one third just double checking myself x minus eight then i'm going to multiply you can multiply by three or negative three but it's less tricky if you multiply by positive three and leave the negative sign here with the one. So that the threes cancel and what I'm left with is negative one times X minus eight. And three times y minus nine. Three y minus 27 equals negative one x, negative one times negative eight or minus eight is going to be plus eight. Then I subtract 27, uh-uh, I add 27, I add 27. Because it was already subtracted, to zero this out, I need to add 27. So that negative 27 plus 27 is zero. I'm left with three Y on the left and negative one X plus um, eight plus seven is 15, carry the one, one plus two is three. So negative one X plus 35. Now I'll divide by three, divide by three, divide by three, so I'll have y equals negative one third x plus 35. No, oh yeah, negative one times negative eight is positive eight, okay, yeah. This is the line that is parallel, or it's the equation of the line that's parallel to this line. And this line down here goes through that point. We don't have a lot of time left. So let me do a perpendicular because they're harder, quite honestly. I have a quick question. Yes. Should that be 35 over three? Negative yes. Third X. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Very good. Okay, I am going to do number 10. It's either 9 or 10. Let's do 10 because it's harder. A little bit harder, I think. Here's the point you're given that's on the new line. Here's the old line you're going to find the slope of. but you're being asked to find a line perpendicular to this. Find line perpendicular. So I'm just gonna say perp. Find a line, no I'm not, perpendicular. Find a line perpendicular to that line, the given line. Okay, so here we go. Step one, find slope of given line. I'm not gonna write it, but you'll know what I'm doing. So we'll have four X plus nine Y 
equals two moved over here. It's positive, I'll put a plus in front of it. I'm going to subtract for X and subtract for X. So that this zeroes out, I'm left with nine Y on the left and I've got negative four X plus two on the right. Then I divide through by nine, divide through by nine, divide through by nine. Y equals negative four ninths. Well, I don't even really need to write it, but I will. Four ninths, X plus two ninths. Now here is another step, a new step. What do I call it? Step one and a half. Step 1.5. Not 15. 1.5. This negative four ninths is the slope of the given line. Okay, so slope of given line is negative four ninths. Let's see, slope of perp line, pep line, no, perp line. Slope of perp line is going to be the opposite reciprocal. I'm going to put a plus sign just to show it's changing to positive. And the reciprocal of four ninths is nine fourths. So positive nine fourths. Now step two is find the equation of the line. Okay, here we go. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Our Y1 is negative three. So Y minus negative three equals nine fourths times x minus six. All right, first I negative negative equals nine fourths times x minus six. Then I multiply by four over one on the right and by four on the left. Notice I put parentheses around what was there. That's so I don't, or I, I at least try not to miss four times three. It's easy to miss. So the fours cancel. On the left, I'm left with nine times X minus six. On the right, I'll have four times Y plus three. And then I distribute, 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 distribute four Y plus 12 equals nine X minus 54, and I'll subtract 12 from both sides. So 
So what that means is I have 4y on the left. On the right, I'll have 9x. I'm going to add 54 plus 12. That'll be 66. But because they're really negative and I'm adding two negative numbers, the number I get is my answer will be negative. And then I divide by four and I divide by four and oh yes, I divide by four. And then, <clears throat> I get my calculator. And I, what do I do? I say 66 divided by four. I'll have 33 over two. Yeah, minus. All this work right here is just to take this equation, put it into slope intercept form so that you know the slope of the given equation. Remember that if the lines are parallel, you're going to use that slope. But if the lines are perpendicular, you have to find the slope of the perpendicular line. They are related. They're opposite reciprocals. So you can't find the slope of the perpendicular line if you don't have the slope of the given line first. And that, children, I believe, ha, is the end. <laughs>